Hi, I'm Semir Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Introduction to SPICE Models of Variable or Controllable Capacitors and Inductors. By controlled or variable capacitors and inductors, we mean capacitors or inductors which are changing due to some external stimulus, for example, pressure, vibration, temperature. While when we are referring to a verbal element, like a verbal capacitor, uh, we mean a change due to operating condition, for example, the voltage across the capacitor. Now, why do we need a model of these elements? Controlled or variable capacitors and inductors are used in a number of applications. For example, varactors, which are basically diodes, and we use the capacitance of the diode, which is voltage dependent, used in oscillator design, VCOs. Uh, we have uh, MEMS sensors uh, that are based on variable capacitors, and then we use uh, variable inductors for power converter control. So there are many applications that we use variable elements. On the other hand, there are some commercial available capacitors, say, or inductors, which are changing due to the operating voltage. For example, ceramic capacitors are voltage dependent, so when you, we use them, the, the capacitance is actually changing. So for all these, we would like to have SPICE models that we can simulate a circuit with a capacitor or inductor which are changing due to either operating condition or some external uh, excitation. Here is, for example, data on ceramic capacitors uh, of different uh, types, uh, COG, X7R, or Y5V. These are different ceramic materials. And as you can see, the capacitance is a function of the diesel voltage on them. These are 50 volt capacitors. They are supposed to operate up to 50 volt without any problem. Now, if we look at the worth of them, which is the Y5V, there is a change as we approach 50 volts of about 80%. That is, what is left is only 20% of the capacitance. So that, that's a lot. And obviously, when you put it in a circuit, and if you like to simulate the circuit, you like to see what will be the effect of this change on the operation of the electronic circuit. So how can we model a, say, controlled capacitor? The idea is to start with the the state space equation of the capacitor, which says that the, the current is equal to the capacitor times the derivative of the voltage. So here is the capacitor, we have the voltage on it, and this is the current flowing through it. So now if we multiply these two sides by say a k, some constant, we have here like a new capacitor. The size of this new capacitor is k times the original one. And we find that in order to emulate or translate this test capacitor into the new capacitor, what we have to do really is to multiply the current by this same k. That is, we leave the voltage as it is and multiply the current by k. That is, if we have a test capacitor, we can sort of duplicate the voltage and put a current dependent source that has a value which is k times the current of this capacitor. And, and here it is in a more graphical way. These two dependent sources are actually act like a transformer. This is a nonlinear transformer. And this is a current source defined as k times IC1, that is k times the current of C1. This is a voltage dependent source, V equal to V1, that is the voltage here. So in this case, if you look here, you see a capacitor, which is k times the size of C1. Is the capacitance is larger, smaller by this uh, constant. And here is a spice, p-spice implementation of this idea. These are the two sources. G value is a dependent current source. E value is a dependent voltage source. 
This is a translation of the voltage. This is the capacitor here between these two lines. So this is the voltage of the capacitor and I'm translating it here to this capacitor. This is a zero voltage voltage source just for measuring the current. It's more convenient to do that. And the voltage across the capacitor is generating a current. This current now is multiplied by 10. This is just an example. This is the K we talked about. And this is the current source, which is IV2. This is this current times 10. And this will be the current drawn here between these two terminals. So as we look into here, we'll see a capacitor, which is 10 nanofarad rather than the one nanofarad of the original capacitor. And here are some simulation results. These are, this is the voltage at the input. This is the voltage at the output of the E value, which is just translating the voltage, which is, of course, they must be the same. And then here are the current. This is the, the current of the test capacitor, the one nanofarad. And this is the reflected current. And as you can see, it's uh, 10 times the scale. So this current is 10 times the scale. So at the input terminal, you see a capacitor which is 10 times larger than the original one nanofarad capacitor. Now we can use the same idea if we have a voltage dependent capacitor. The K, that is the constant here, will be now dependent on the voltage on the capacitor. Suppose we have a capacitor which has this behavior, which is sort of similar to what we have seen before, except I've changed the scale of the voltage. And it starts with one microfarad, then goes down. We can express this behavior as a curve, which is one minus 1.6 milli, 10 to the minus three times VC. This is the voltage across the capacitor. This actually represents this line, okay? Now, using the, exactly the same idea, I start with the one microfarad capacitor, translating the voltage between input across this capacitor. And now I am generating a current at the input, which is equal to the current of this capacitor times this function, one minus 1.6 milli VC. VC is the voltage across this capacitor, which is also the voltage here. These are the same voltages. Here. And here is the implementation. We see that this is the translation of the voltage, the current, and I'm just multiplying the current. This is again a test uh, voltage source just to measure the current. I of V2 times this constant, which is 1 minus 1.6 milli V reference, which is the voltage here, which is also the voltage here. And as we look at the input, we see now a different capacitor depending on the voltage. Now I'm exciting this circuit with a uh, 500 volt bias. This is a bias voltage, offset voltage, amplitude 5 volt, and a frequency of 1 kilohertz. And here are the results. Again, the voltages are, of course, the same. This is the current of the original capacitor. And this is now the current of the reflected capacitor. Now, the constant, as it happens, for 500 volt is 0.2. So the reflected current is 0.2 of the original current. And you can see it's about 3 milliamp and 3 milliamp times 0.2 is about 0.6, and this is the 0.6 milliamp. So uh, here, in this case, the value of the capacitance is a function of the voltage across it. So what can we do with an inductor? Well, we use exactly the same idea. We, we take a test inductor, translate it to the input with a constant. In this case, I'm using a voltage source at the input, translating the current at the input to the inductor, measuring the voltage here, and multiplying it by K to generate this uh, voltage source. So again, we have this state space equation, multiplying it by K. This is the new inductor. So to get it, we have to multiply the voltage by K, and this is what we are doing in here. 
Another way for implementing this uh, variable inductor is to put a current source at the input and a voltage source at the output. In this case, what we are going to do is to measure the input voltage and then as it turns out, we have to divide it by this constant. This is a constant, it's a V of K. K is a constant, so I'm div dividing it by the voltage, which represents this constant. And then I have this current source, which is the current flowing through this uh, secondary, okay? This is exactly the same thing, only we have reversed the current and voltage source, and this is why we have to divide it rather than multiplying it as before. Now, in this case, K is made a function of the current through the inductor. And this could be a table, this is in fact a table, which represents the non-linearity of this inductor as a function of this current. So we put here the table which represents the behavior of this particular inductor. And as a result, we are going to have here the effect of the current on the inductance of this particular inductor. And as we simulated, and there is a current flowing in the uh, circuit, the inductance will change accordingly. So this actually brings me to the end of this short presentation. I thank you for your attention. I hope you found it interesting and it'll be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.